All right, guys, welcome back to Underground Science. And in this video, we'll be looking at the renal corpuscle. All right, so from our basic structure of the nephron video, um, hopefully you guys remember that the renal corpuscle, so let's go and scroll down here and write it down. So hopefully you guys remember that the renal, the renal corpuscle was made up of our glomerulus. So let's go and write this down. It's made up of our glomerulus glomerulus and our um, Bowman's capsule all right and our Bowman's capsule all right so capsule and so our um, Bowman's capsule and our glomerulus uh, makes up our renal corpuscle all right and so if we go up here and we look at where the glomerulus is this tuft of capillaries right here, right? This um, capillaries that are bunched up together is the, um, makes up the glomerulus, all right? So let's go ahead and draw, I mean, not draw, but like label it as the glomerulus, all right? So the glomerulus. And um, the Bowman's capsule is actually this structure right here that kind of wraps around the glomerulus right, and comes up to about right there, all right, so right about there, this whole thing is the Bowman's capsule, all right, so let's go and label that, so this whole space that wraps around the glomerulus is the Bowman's capsule, all right, the Bowman's capsule, all right, so again, these two make up the renal corpuscle, all right, so um, also a good thing to know for this video is that um, this right here is going to be our afferent arterial, our afferent, and again, we reviewed the basic structures in our basic structures of nephron video, so if you want to refresh it, just go and check that out. Afferent arterial, and this is our efferent arterial, and depending on the type of nephron, our efferent arteri arterial can um, branch into peritubular capillaries or our vasa recta, all right? So it's our efferent, and we'll talk about the um, two main types of nephrons, all right? So efferent arterial. Yeah, so we'll talk about those in a later video. But in this video, we're just going to focus on the renal corpuscle, all right? So blood's coming through the afferent arterial, and we said it was around, um, so in the kidneys, we get around 1,125 milliliters of blood per minute. All right, so that means in five minutes, um, our kidneys will receive all all of our um, all of our blood, right? Because we have around five liters of blood, or five thousand milliliters, right? So um, so if we took that if we um, took that into perspective, right? So let's go and write that down. So if we see around eleven hundred and twenty five milliliters of blood coming in. Right, and then in the glomerulus, the blood will reach the glomerulus. However, not all 1125 milliliters will be will go to the glomerulus. Only around 625 milliliters um, of blood will go into the glomerulus. Right, so this is per minute. So in the glomerulus, we'll see 600, and so this is not a good color, so because I can't really see it, 625 milliliters per minute. All right, but then where did the other 500 milliliters per minute of blood go, right? So the other 500 milliliters per minute of blood, right? So the other 500 milliliters, right, will actually leave through the efferent arterial, all right? So let's go and write that down first, then we can talk about it more. And then so the other 500 milliliters of blood will leave through the efferent arterial, okay? So it's so this means that not all of our blood that's coming per minute will actually go to the glomerulus. Only around 625 milliliters of blood per minute will go in the glomerulus and the rest of the 500 will leave via the, um, the efferent arterial. All right, so now, so now, that's, um, so now that, that's clear, right? Couldn't speak there for a minute. We can start to look at um, what the um, glomerular filtration rate is. So let's go and write that down. So what is the glomerular glomerular filtration rate? All right. 
filtration rate. So um, let's see this. We might just pull up another picture, right? Because we're running out of space anyway. It's getting too crowded. But anyway, let's just go and write the definition first. So the glomerular filtration rate is pretty much the amount or the volume, right? So we'll just write the amount in milliliters. All right. So it's also it's pretty much volume. So the amount in milliliters of right of sorry about that. I don't know why that. All right, the amount of um, of blood plasma. So the glomerular filtration rate is the amount of blood plasma that the amount of blood plasma that gets filtered, right? That gets filtered from the glomerulus, gets filtered from the glomerulus and goes into or gets dumped into, right? And gets or we'll just say and goes to, because that's a better way, I guess, to say it, from the glomerulus and goes to the Bowman's capsule, right? So the Bowman's capsule. And then we, we can't forget that it's rate, all right? So we have to have milliliters per minute, okay? So because we need time in the denominator. So it's volume over time. So um, every minute for every for every one minute all right so that's that's pretty much the definition of, of our glomerular filtration rate the amount in milliliters of blood plasma that gets filtered from the glomerulus and goes to the bowman's capsule for every one minute all right um so that means we're going to have a glomerular filtration rate of and of x and then millimeters per minute so it turns out that only around 20 percent of the blood that enters the glomerulus goes to the Bowman's capsule. And 20%, um, right, of 625 is 125. So the glomerular filtration rate, glomerular filtration rate, can't speak, um, is around 125 milliliters per minute. So again, there's only 625 milliliters per minute of blood going into the glomerulus, but from there, we have 125 milliliters per minute, so milliliters per minute of blood plasma. All right, so blood plasma. And again, this blood plasma will contain all the nutrients, all right, that's coming from our afferent arterial. All right, so that's pretty much the glomerular filtration rate that we had to um, get through. All right, now another thing that we should mention is the um, visceral and parietal layers of our Bowman's capsule. So the visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule is actually the inner part that lines the um, the glomerulus. So if we outlined it in orange is the one that I'm outlining at the moment is our visceral capsule. All right, so it's our visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule, I should say, not our visceral capsule. So the orange, so let me go and draw it out as orange, keep it the same color is our visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule. All right, so the visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule. And um, the outer layer is gonna be our parietal layer of our Bowman's capsule. So that one I'll outline in, let's see if I have some more colors here. I'll outline in um, brown, I guess, all right? So the outside part, so around here to here is our parietal layer, parietal layer of our Bowman's capsule. All right, so of our Bowman's capsule, let's squeeze in there. All right, so our visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule is actually lined with these um, uh, cool types of cells called um, podocytes. Okay, so if you actually zoomed in to this, right here, um, this visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule, we would see podocytes that line it, all right? So instead, right, instead of just drawing the line right here, right, let's actually draw literally those um, podocyte cells, all right? So I have kind of like feet-like projections like that, all right? So they have feet-like projections. That's what they're called, podocytes. Okay, and they line the visual layer of our Bowman's capsule. 
And these podocytes are really good in terms of um, in terms of filtration also. Okay, so it prevents again from large uh, molecules from large compounds in the blood and the glomerulus to enter into our Bowman's capsule, right? Like formed elements, for example. And even below this, we have these structures called, so these right here in between are filtration slits, all right? And even more, we have these thing, these proteins called nephrin proteins, all right? And these nephrin proteins are a little below, and it, it's between our podocytes of our visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule. And these nephrin proteins, for, even furthermore, right, prevent um, from any unwanted or large compounds to pass through and go into the Bowman's capsule. All right, so these are all just mechanism, mechanisms just to prevent large proteins or any large uh, formed element like red blood cells, white blood cells, or platelets to go to the Bowman's capsule from the glomerulus. What ends up happening though is that we actually have um, we actually have like our regular nutrients that only our blood plasma can enter. All right, because we wouldn't want blood to enter here, right? Or we would be probably peeing blood, which isn't good, okay? So now if everything's normal, then uh, if our glomerulus isn't damaged or anything like that, then um, we should have a regular and healthy filtration of just blood plasma that contains our nutrients, all right, guys? And also, um, another thing we should point out is that um, I drew a little too close, but right above, we have this... Um, we have this uh, structure, I guess you could say, that's called our um, basement membrane. All right, so our basement membrane, um, you can actually divide it up into some layers, right? So if we actually went ahead and took this basement membrane, right? I'm trying to figure out where to zoom it in just a little a tad bit so we can go ahead and see it. Okay, so I actually drew arrow all the way down here, and we'll actually look at it right here. All right, so let's go and draw um, just a regular layer of the basement membrane. All right, just going to just save time and just draw it like that. Okay, so it actually turns out that the um, basement membrane has type four collagen. Okay, so it's a structural protein and it's type four collagen. All right, so let's go ahead <clears throat> and label this just inside here, type four collagen. All right, so another thing we have that's part of the basement membrane, guys, is that, so let me go and color it in real quick, but um, this structure, right, allows positively charged uh, molecules from the glomerulus to enter the Bowman's capsule much more easily than negative to, negatively charged molecules. And why is that? Because this is heparin, sur heparin, can't speak for some reason, I don't know why, sorry about the heparin sulfate. All right, and heparin sulfate is actually negatively charged. So all of this, right, all of this green right here and all of that green above too, right, is actually going to be negatively charged. All right, so it's going to be negatively charged, okay? And so what that's going to allow is that from the glomerulus up, up here, right, we're going to have like, let's say things um, like plasma proteins, or antibodies that are neg negatively charged, like albumin or something, right? Or some uh, antibody. Um, so if albumin is a good transport protein in our blood and antibodies are good for the immune system that are here in the glomerulus, we don't want to filter that into our Bowman's capsule, all right? We want it to um, go back into our blood, okay? Uh, maybe via the efferent arterial that we discussed above. So this heparin sulfate, because our antibodies and um, plasma proteins are mostly negatively charged, it doesn't allow um, uh, those plasma proteins or antibodies or, or other molecules that are negatively, char negatively charged, it doesn't allow it to come inside the Bowman's capsule. However, few things can come in with trouble, but it's still going to somehow um, find a way to get filtered in, into the Bowman's capsule. But this heparin sulfate is a good um, sort of filtration uh, mechanism that our uh, basement membrane has in our um, uh, nephron, all right? So um, let's go and write that down. So these negatively charged um, heparin sulfate structure on our basement membrane of our um, Bowman's capsule, right, allows 
allows positively charged, I'll just say positively charged uh, molecules, right? Not particles, molecules. Okay, I can't even write today either. Sorry about that. Molecules to enter or get filtered. All right, so, but anyway, so it allows positively charged po molecules to enter the the Bowman's capsule, the Bowman's capsule much easier, all right? Much easier. So it allows positively charged molecules to enter the Bowman's capsule much easier because of this is because of our heparin sulfate is negatively charged and we know opposite charges attract. All right, but however, we will see some negative charges, negative charged molecules that can enter, but it, ha it enters with much more trouble, all right? But it's a good way of keeping other um, big proteins out that are negatively charged. Okay, so that's that's done right there. We talked about the glomerular filtration rate, and we talked about our podocytes, right? Lining the um, lining our uh, visceral layer of our Bowman's capsule. And we talked about the basement membrane, and we talked about these nephrin slits right here. So these are nephrin proteins that will further play a role in trapping some of the large um, molecules from the glomerulus, not, so we'll trap those and let it not enter our Bowman's capsule, all right? And then we have things like mesangial cells that we'll talk about that are also present inside the glomerulus or in the glomerular region, right, in the glomerulus region. And those mesangial cells can actually also act as um, little macrophages that can eat up anything that, or can phagocytose any, um, molecule that's stuck in the nephrin slits. All right, guys, so this is pretty much what, what I wanted to get through for the renal corpuscle, right, our glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. Um, I hope this video made sense to you guys. So I hope to see you guys in my future videos. We'll talk about more cool topics about bio, biochem, physics, and chem. Um, don't forget to hit that notification bell and like and subscribe. See you guys later and uh, stay safe.